Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite hack fraud, Gardner, the Linux gamer. Um, I want to say before we start this video, uh, thank you to Cassidy and to Daniel for being understanding. Um, you'll see in a second that the video quality is not that great. Uh, we had to record this uh, three, uh, two times in order to actually get usable footage. Um, so thank you to them for, for uh, playing along as I make believe being a professional YouTuber. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to play make believe as a YouTuber if it wasn't for my uh, patrons over there on Patreon. I want to give a special shout out to Sheldon Halcom. Uh, thank you so much, my dude. Your support is truly appreciated. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button. You can also hit that like button. It really helps to show out. And if you're not so inclined to use Google services, head over to the library, lbry.tv slash at the Linux gamer. It's a good time. Thanks for joining me again, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no problem. You guys are uh, you guys are the pe basically the project leads of Elementary OS, and uh, and you guys have been um, working on uh, App Center, which is your your uh, app store for Elementary, and uh, you've you're about to launch a uh, Indiegogo campaign. Can you uh, let people know what's going on with that campaign? Yeah, so uh, if you didn't know, a couple years ago, we crowdfunded uh, App Center on Indiegogo the first time um, because we wanted to bring like this store and this publishing backend where people could put uh, open source, pay what you want apps up. And so we've kind of learned a lot about what people like about it and uh, where people are struggling with it and what our developers want to see. And so we're back on Indiegogo and we want to rebuild the back end of App Center so we can improve privacy and security with apps. Uh, we can make our payment system more streamlined. And we also want to make it so that you can get App Center apps on other distros. Mm. That's really ambitious. Um, so and and you're launching your Indiegogo campaign so that you guys can come together and and like achieve this goal, right? Yeah. So we're gonna have we're flying out um, a handful of people. We've got a team of people who, you know, some of them have helped build App Center, uh, you know, a couple of years ago and over the last couple of years, and some some newer newer faces, I guess you could say, who hmm. we're gonna be leaning on for some of this work. Um, we're also going to be. Uh, joined by some folks from Endless and Flathub, so that's kind of exciting to have this. It's it's a cross desktop cross uh, project effort that we're doing because ideally this this backend will be something that like Flathub Flathub could host as well. Definitely. Uh, so how would this project uh, integrate with Flathub uh, as well as with your project? Um, so each of us could host our you know different versions of the same same backend and. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the back end is what uh, developers go, they log in, they submit their app to App Center, and then it runs a suite of automated tests. Uh, and then it gets their apps, every app that's submitted and every update gets human reviewed and then approved and released to users. Um, our current system is built around a Deb the Debian packaging infrastructure because that's what we had at the time a couple of years ago. Um, but now we're, we're rebuilding this back end around Flatpak. And so there's a couple of open source projects like Flat Manager and Flat Hub itself. Uh, that manage flat packs. So we're looking to integrate with flat packs, but providing this really, really good developer experience and developer dashboard um, in a way that FlatHub could also adopt it for their uh, app submission process. So each of us can host our own versions, but it's an open source project running on our own infrastructure. Right. That's awesome. So this isn't just going to be an elementary thing. This is a, this is a community wide effort. That's really cool. Yeah, exactly. We've been in touch with folks at um, Endless and, and FlatHub and Gnome, and we're trying to make this a, a cross-project initiative. So how do you uh, anticipate supporting uh, projects that want to publish on elementary but don't have like the, the required uh, latest versions or dependencies? Yeah, we've definitely heard from um, developers who want to publish like new libraries, like the uh, Vala language server is one that like somebody just started working on this year. So of course it's not in the Ubuntu LTS we use, or like people who want to publish games using the latest Godot engine. And um, so that's kind of been a classic problem for uh, shipping applications on like your your classic 
Linux distributions is that they have to use what's available on the platform. But Flatpak kind of gives us the ability to detach the platform a little bit. And uh, so if developers want to ship like these cutting edge libraries that aren't available in Ubuntu or Debian yet, uh, they could ship it as part of their Flatpak. And, and so we can get those like cutting edge games and we can get those development tools and, and the things that developers are really excited to work on. Yeah, I'm really excited about this for indie games, especially. I've, there's a lot of developers of Godot games out there that I've talked to who, who've been kind of waiting for this for Elementary OS App Center. So I'm I'm excited. So one of the uh, stated goals of the project uh, of this specific uh, revamp here is that you want to increase privacy and security for your users. Um, how do you think that uh, switching over to a new backend and providing flats uh, flat packs? is going to help end users. So the kind of current model of distributing applications through like Debian packaging is something that was developed when everybody who was packaging applications was like a distribution maintainer. And so it made sense for those packages to have all kinds of permissions to modify things or to install like little scripts here and there to kind of make everything integrated because it was the people who are making your operating system who are packaging applications. Mm -hmm. But now things are really different and developers package their own applications. And we really don't want those packages to have as much power as they do. Um, we don't want them to be able to like mess with the system and change your auto starts or your configurations or anything like that. And at runtime, uh, we really don't want them to have access to like all of your files and folders or like your passwords or be able to just read your webcam without your permission. So um, we want to move everything over to Flatpak because it's been built around this kind of new confinement model where we're reducing the scope of permissions that applications have. And so that they do have to ask permission uh, before they're able to touch any of your kind of private data or like hardware devices and things like that. That's awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining that this is going to allow you as the elementary team to uh, expand um, flat pack integration into elementary. Is that right? Yeah. So um, what we have going on right now is kind of um, the old model of what was called like agents. And so we have like an agent that handles uh, location services and an agent that does like your password dialogue and stuff like that. And so now we're going to use um, the new uh, API, which is like a cross desktop open source thing, uh, like an XTG thing is called portals. And so we're going to move everything over to portals and portals work um, with Flatpak and with confined applications. And uh, so we, we want to work on um, integrating that into the operating system and into system settings. And so that's something that we feel like moving over to Flatpak is really going to enable us to have those really fine grained permissions and controls and, and enforce that consent model across the operating system. So in, in terms of like uh, other things that you want to have um, improved with the App Center, um, you said something about uh, uh, streamlined payments in, in the video on your Indiegogo page. Uh, could you expand on that? Like, what does that look like for end users? So, yeah, we've got some mockups there on the Indiegogo page um, and some prototypes even that we've built. Um, but the idea is right now you have to, when you purchase an app on App Center, you have to enter in your payment details every time. And mm. that's because we're kind of we're leaning on the idea of, you know, not storing any payment details to be as, as secure as possible. Um, you know, the best way to keep your payment details safe is to not store them anywhere. Yeah. Um, however, that's, we know that it's pretty inconvenient for users, especially if they want to, you know, install multiple apps. Like a one-click payment would be better for users. It'd be le more convenient, but also be better for developers because it's more likely that they'd get paid. Right. So we have some prototypes for a secure payment system that stores your data locally on your machine. Um, there's also some questions around the Stripe API. Stripe is our payment processor, and we can use, um, they have a customer's API we could potentially use to store payment data. Um, we have to hammer out some of those details, I think, in person at the Sprint um, with all, everybody in a room. But the idea is you should be able to add and manage your payment details in the operating system, purchase an app, um, and it's using a new technology that's part of Flatpak called an, a Flatpak Authenticator. So this actually means that if you add the elementary um, flat pack remote on a different system that's not running elementary OS, it'll actually support, as long as it's running a newer version of flat pack, it'll actually support um, coming up with a payment dialogue with that authenticator and purchasing app center apps on any platform. So that's, that's really exciting. That's cool. So if, if, for example, if I was an elementary user and I bought an app on, um, on through your app center, 
would I be able to use that flat pack on any other distro if I've used it? I mean, if I've bought it already? Yeah, that's that's definitely the idea is to be able to restore that's your payments. Cool. And of course, there's some work, you know, app, app developers uh, have to, you know, use the correct APIs, uh, the correct portal APIs and stuff that are cross platform for that to all work perfectly. But that's the goal. That is that's really exciting stuff. And that's uh, that's using technology that's already part of Flatpak. Yeah, it's a newer technology part of, I think, the 1.6 release. Um, and that we've been in, we've been in discussion with the folks building Flatpak and, and um They've kind of been really good about like asking our opinion because they know we have an existing payment system for our Debian-based app store. Um, mm. So they're kind of designing this new integrated payment system into Flatpak itself, and and it's uh, it looks like it's going to work really well for us. Yeah, when we were um, at uh, the Linux Application Summit with uh, Alexander Larson, um, we got to talk to him in person, and um, we kind of came up with this idea of like, okay, well, what if the uh, authenticator, the the payments dialog, basically, was a flat pack itself and part of the flat pack repository? And so that's kind of the way he built it out is that um, when you go to and install an application from our flat pack remote, it'll actually download the authenticator, which is just a flat pack and be able to run it and do payment processing. So whether you're using like GNOME software or uh, KDE Discover or whatever your app store of choice is on your distribution of choice, we'll be able to provide that same uh, pay what you want payments flow. That is really cool. <laughs> um, and so that's going to allow you to uh, have App Center uh, become like cross uh operating system you'll be able to use this on other distributions is that right yeah yeah and uh of course you know we make an operating system and and uh we think our operating system is pretty good and we we think people should use our operating system and i i guess kind of the hope is you know people are using these apps that were originally designed for elementary os um it's a way to draw them in to be interested in elementary os itself but if there's people out there who you know love and use and, and prefer fedora or ubuntu or something um, there's no reason they can't, you know, technically they can't run these apps on, on their platform of choice as well. So if everybody out there is uh, liking what they hear, uh, how can people best support your project? Uh, I'm assuming heading over to Indiegogo. Yeah, or if you want to uh, just head directly to our website, elementary.io, we have a link at the top that'll just take you right over to the campaign page. And uh, if you back us, there's like early access rewards, stickers, and like a mug and a hoodie. And like we put together some really cool swag for you guys this time around. Yeah, it's mm. really, I, I, I want that hoodie. Like I'm, yeah. Yeah, that hoodie really is, a, that hoodie is super cool. I like the design. I'm kind of a sucker for pastel gradients. So that's, that's my jam right there. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I just want to say like everybody who, uh, if you're, if you're part of the Linux community, this is like a big deal. Like elementary, you guys are doing great work. You're supporting not just your own operating system, but the entire open source community. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for being awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on your show. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, thanks for reaching out and letting me know about this because uh, it would I would have come to this party late if you hadn't reached out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks again to Daniel and to Cassidy uh, for being awesome guys. I really appreciate them coming on the show, uh, seeing value in actually talking about what they're doing on my show. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys are great. If you want to help support what they're doing, there's going to be a link in the description to both their crowdfunding campaign and to their website. Uh, thank you for watching, and I love you guys. I'll see you next time.